Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning on this with this very important announcement and investment we're making here in Hamilton. I first want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Anish Anish Anishinaabeg and the Haudenosaunee and acknowledge the neighboring communities of Six Nations, Grand River, and Mississaugas of the Credit. I would also like to recognize that Ontario is home to many diverse Indigenous peoples, including Métis. My name, of course, is Chad Collins, and I'm the Member of Parliament for Hamilton East Stony Creek. And uh, it's uh, great to be back at Hamilton Airport uh, with my colleagues, and I know joined by a couple of members of City Council as well, who I think are here. Um, you know, for me, uh, first elected to Council in the mid-90s, uh, one of my first votes on Council was the decision to privatize Hamilton's airport. And what we uh, knew at the time was that we lacked the municipal expertise to, um, to operate this airport in, in a commercial, uh, uh, from a commercial perspective. And th this airport was losing money every single year that it was in operation under our municipal government. And when we privatized it, our hope and our dream was to see jobs, was to see investments made by other levels of government. And uh, through the years, we developed our airport employment growth district. And that was to see the investments, like the investments that you see here today. And it checks all the boxes on the City of Hamilton's economic development plan. And that is to increase our uh, commercial and industrial assessment. And you see that with all of the jobs and all the um, investments that have been made over the last couple of years. Look no further than, than the Amazon plant that we have just outside the fence line here at the airport. And you'll see what kind of activity this airport has brought to the City of Hamilton. And it's not just the investments that our government has made, but past governments as well. And so I'm honored and privileged today to be here, joined by my colleagues, um, who will announce uh, the investment that we're making. And so first, I would like to introduce the Minister of Transport, the Honorable Omar Al-Gabra, to deliver some good news for us today. Minister. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Chad. It's uh, really a pleasure to be back, uh, not only in Hamilton, but here at the Hamilton uh, International Airport. Um, I'm standing here with my colleagues, Minister Tassi, Chad Collins, and I know Lisa Hafner sends her regards. She would have liked to be with us. Unfortunately, uh, she was unable to. Uh, and I really want to give a, uh, take a moment to acknowledge the work and the advocacy that my three colleagues in the Hamilton region that have been um, working day in and day out on behalf of the people of Hamilton, advocating uh, for the airport, for the economic opportunities that exist around the airport for jobs, for tourism, uh, and I'm really delighted to be standing here with them uh, making this announcement. So, the John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport is one of Canada's largest for moving domestic cargo. That's why it's an important hub for commercial travel, the region's economy, and even our entire supply chain. Our government has been working hard to strengthen our supply chain, particularly in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Increasing climate change and global events such as Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. Building a stronger and more resilient supply chain will in turn deliver affordable goods to Canadians faster, combat inflation and build an economy that works for everyone. This airport is therefore an important link in our supply chain, which brings me to today's great announcement. I'm pleased to announce that our government is investing nearly $23.5 million in the John C. Monroe in Hamilton International Airport. And it's great that I make this, mo uh, this announcement in with the background of uh, an airplane a sound that reminds all of us why this announcement is so important. This project, which will cost close to $47 million, will allow the airport to handle increased cargo operations by improving and expanding airfield capacity, increase the icing capacity, and build new and independent road to reduce congestion. 
It will also create new permanent middle class jobs for Canadians in the region. This is great news for the Hamilton region and for our entire country. I'm happy to make this announcement today, which is a perfect example of how we are investing in local projects and the local economy to fight inflation by having a more resilient and strong supply chain and in turn making the lives of Canadians more affordable. So I, I want to once again take a moment to acknowledge and thank first Her Worship Andrea Horvath, the Mayor of Hamilton, Kathy Puckering from Vantage Airport Group, and Cole uh, um, Horn Horncastle, Executive Managing Director at the Hamilton International Airport. I also want to thank uh, sincerely all the staff and the employees at the airport and those who work at all businesses that support the airport. It's been a tough three years. The pandemic and the, la the ramification that the pandemic continues to have on our, on our aviation sector has been difficult. And there's been a lot of uncertainty. But their commitment, their dedication to their jobs, to their community is what kept our industry moving. And I, in closing, I also want to thank Cargo Jet. We're standing in front of one of Cargo Jet's airplanes. And what a great success, Canadian success story of a business that has grown to do so much for our community, to deliver so much for our economy and our businesses. And I'm really uh, delighted and grateful to their staff, uh, their leadership for their vision. So um, it's great. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here outside. It could have been worse, uh, but, uh, but it's really a delight to be with all of you and back in Hamilton. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. And, um, you know, every time uh, Minister Al Gabra has been here in Hamilton, he brings a check with him. So you're invited again back uh, next week. Um, no, in all seriousness, uh, you know, whether it's the port or the airport, uh, the minister has been back uh, several times over the last year and prior to my time making strategic investments here in Hamilton in terms of our multimodal uh, uh, program that the city has in terms of looking for ways to improve operations at the port and the airport. And so thank you, Minister, for your kind words in terms of what's happening here at the airport. Uh, I'd now like to uh, call upon Minister of Responsible for Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario and Member of Parliament for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas, the Honourable Philomena Tassi to the podium. Minister. Well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. And thanks, uh, my friend uh, Chad Collins, for that uh, introduction. It's an honour and a pleasure to serve with you in Ottawa, you're a champion for your community. Uh, I also want to welcome Hamilton's new mayor, Her Worship Andrea Horvath. Um, as this is the first time that we are uh, making an announcement together, and it's the first public announcement, I want to take this opportunity, Andrea, to really offer my heartfelt congratulations. I know that Andrea and I have already had a number of meetings and discussions, and I really look forward to working collaboratively, collaboratively with you and your council. So more to come for Hamilton. So look, folks, today is a great day for Hamilton. Hamilton has the opportunity to welcome the Prime Minister and all of our cabinet to our ambitious city. And I'm so happy that my cabinet colleagues are here to see firsthand some of the ways that our city has been transformed by the historic investments that have been made here. There's no better way to kick off this week than to be here at the John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport to talk about how our government is working to strengthen our supply chains, create good jobs, and grow our economy. The John C. Monroe Airport plays a critical role for Hamilton and many of the surrounding communities. It is a key part of Hamilton's competitive advantage completing our status as a regional transit hub with a deep water port, 
excellent highway infrastructure, rail, and easy connections to the United States. I remember in 2019 when I had the privilege of announcing $18.5 million for the John C. Monroe Airport to upgrade two main runways, taxiways, and lighting systems. And Kathy was a tireless advocate to get those funds. Because of that investment, Hamilton's only international airport was able to accommodate larger aircraft, which are frequently used both for both domestic and international trade routes to Asia and to Europe. That project was about expanding the John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport so Hamilton could better participate in international trade. The announcement Minister Agabra has just made today builds on this previous investment. I wish to extend my gratitude to you, Kathy, to the team. I know that we have board members here and, as the minister has acknowledged, all the workers here at the airport. Your efforts continue to keep Hamilton on the map. Thank you to you and your team. Hamilton has so much to contribute to Canada and the world. And for me, it's about unlocking potential and opportunities that already exist. For example, Hamilton is one of Canada's biggest industrial centers, most known for our steel and aluminum. And now, through the support from the federal government, ArcelorMittal de Fasco will be making steel in Hamilton using electric arc furnaces. ArcelorMittal de Fasco is transforming Hamilton's namesake industry and making green steel for Canada and for the world to use. Maybe we will start referring to ourselves as the green steel city in the future. That works on a couple of levels, given the incredible beauty of our forests, many waterfalls and amazing trails. A few other keystone federal investments that have transformed Hamilton are the LRT, countless improvements in infrastructure, trails and cycling paths, the internationally acclaimed Ken Sobel Building, and cultural amenities like the Ancaster Memorial Arts Centre. I could go on and on, but I won't. I just want to make the point that our government is going to continue to make those investments to build on the great work of Hamiltonians, Hamilton workers and Hamilton leaders. There is so much potential that exists in Hamilton, and I thank and congratulate Hamiltonians who work continuously to elevate our city. I'm happy that I get to join you all here today for this fantastic announcement. Thank you, Minister Algabra, for making this announcement, bringing this much-needed funds so that we can keep these planes going, keep these supplies moving, and that ultimately will help us with costs that we know are escalating. By making this simpler and easier, it's going to bring down the costs, and this is very welcome news to Hamilton. So without further ado, now I pass it back to the MC, uh, my friend Chad Collins. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. And thank you, uh, Minister Tassi. And, uh, you know, I can say with uh, sincerity that uh, almost since the day that she was elected, Minister Horvath and her team have been in contact with our local Hamilton caucus, uh, Minister Tassi, MP Hefner and myself. And she's made it very clear that uh, her priorities, and I'll let her speak for herself, but she's been very clear that, um, that the city of Hamilton needs continuous investments from both the province and the federal government. And uh, it's not just for housing and homelessness, which I know uh, uh, the mayor is uh, very anxious uh, to, uh, to contribute to and to resolve, but it's for economic development. And so, um, Madam Mayor, it's my honour and privilege to, to be with you here today, having served with you for so many years at City Council. And I'm um, so happy for your election, and it's my honour and privilege to introduce you today. So, Your Worship, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, MP Collins, for the introduction. Uh, and you're correct, we, uh, we did spend many, many a year at City Council together, and I'm totally honoured to be here with all of you uh, uh, today to celebrate this amazing announcement. Um, I want to welcome Minister Algabra back to Hamilton. Uh, like all Hamiltonians, I've appreciated the announcements uh, that you have made in our city since becoming Transport Minister. I'm so pleased to be here uh, as well with the passionate champion for Hamilton, the Honourable Philomena Tassi. Uh, a special shout out, of course, to Vantage Canada's Vice President, CEO of St. Uh, John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport, Kathy Puckering. 
uh, our key person on the ground here. It's also important to acknowledge we have city councillors here. Uh, we have Councillor Pauls, and earlier I saw Councillor Spadafora. Uh, just, um, just to know, we have a budget meeting today, so. You better get, no, I'm only kidding you. <laughs> it's really great to have councillors here as well because this announcement uh, is something that all of council is going to be celebrating. Um, so on behalf of Hamiltonians, I want to thank the federal government for this tremendous invest investment in our airport. The city is proud to work with our partner, Vantage Airport Group. It's through these strong alliances that we're able to stand together today celebrating this fantastic announcement. Since 1996, the city of Hamilton and Vantage Airport Group have worked together to not only build the capacity of our airport, but build a growing and vital sector of our economy, goods movement. It's a key building block that strengthens our airport. John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport plays an enormous role in Hamilton's economy, as has been mentioned already a couple of times. We've watched it rapidly grow in passenger flights as more carrier options continue to come on board. Pun intended, right? Uh, and even more impressive is our airport's strength in cargo, which puts us at the epicenter of moving the goods that Canadians enjoy from coast to coast to coast. You saw we had a chance to be uh, on the plane. It was pretty amazing to see the size of that, of that plane and to know uh, that aircraft will be even larger because of this announcement. Capacity will grow uh, is, uh, is really spectacular. Hamiltonians and many Canadians still remember when on the evening of December 13th, 2020, it was John C. Monroe International Airport that received Canada's first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines by cargo jet. A very proud moment for all of us. Cargo jet is one of Canada's largest air cargo operators with one of their biggest Canadian hubs right here at the Hamilton International Airport. They continue to move an enormous amount of PPE through here and Hamilton is very pleased to play that vital role to help combat the pandemic. Hamilton's central geography, our central geographic location, as was uh, uh, touched on by, uh, by MP Collins, between Pearson Airport and the U.S. Eastern Seaboard, efficient highway system, strong rail connections, and home to Canada's busiest port on the Canadian Great Lakes makes our city a goods movement leader in Canada. As well, Hamilton's federal designation as a foreign trade zone point means the infrastructure is in place to provide concierge service for Hamilton companies looking to import and export goods through this airport. Today's investment undoubtedly strengthens our air, air cargo capacity. It solidifies why major brands like Amazon, DHL and KF Aerospace have chosen to invest here, which means more good paying jobs in our community. Again, I want to thank you, our federal partners, so much, and congratulations to Vantage Airport Group. It truly can be said, get ready, I got another one for you. It truly can be said that the sky's the limit for Hamilton International Airport. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Horvath. And, um, you know, investments like the one that we're announcing here today wouldn't happen unless there was a, um, a strong partner at the table. And um, I can honestly say from sitting on the city's, formerly sitting on the city's airport uh, subcommittee, that uh, the airport uh, group has an incredible team here. Much of what you see here in terms of the investments that have been made, whether it's cargo jet or um, other investments that have been made around the airport, is in large part due to the board that they have, but as well as their team and their staff here. And uh, no better leader to lead the, the airport than Kathy Puckering. And so now it's my pleasure to invite Ms. Kathy Puckering, Vice President and Head of Vantage Airport Group Canadian Network, to say a few words. Kathy. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport. What an amazing day. And before I begin, it's my pleasure that to acknowledge and to thank the two ministers that are here today for their support and their championing of Hamilton International, the Honourable Omar Al-Gabra and the Honourable Philomena Tassi, and our Mayor, Her Worship Andrea Horvath, thank you, and MP Chad Collins, thank you. Thank you for being here, for the kind words and for emceeing today. 
Before I get into my rem remarks, I also want to thank the two counselors that are in attendance today as well. I saw Esther Pauls earlier and have newly met Councillor Mike Spadafora. Welcome. City staff, sorry that they all couldn't be in attendance today because of budget meetings, but I do want to recognize a few that are here, and I do see Sue Remack and Michael is here. I'm not sure if Ray's out there as well, but thank you, and thank you for the support of our airport. And to all the rest of the City of Hamilton staff, from the airport and from the Tradeport Board, I do want to acknowledge three members that are here with us today. Our board chair, Ron Foxcroft, who everyone knows well. And I also want to offer him congratulations today as he has recently received his third recognition from the Government of Canada with the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Medal. Congratulations, Ron. And beside him, the Honourable Stan Keyes and Mr. Ed Minich, the uh, Board's Finance and Audit Committee Chair. Welcome. There are many, many here from the Hamilton Airport team and from the partners, but I want to acknowledge under the leadership of Tradeport's Executive Managing Director Cole Horncastle and his team and our parent company Vantage Airport Group, the private operator of the City of Hamilton's airport. All of our partners and our volunteers, our airport ambassadors, ambassadors that are joining us today in the, the blue jackets, Thank you for everything that you do and to all the other guests that are in attendance today for your continuous support. Today is an incredibly exciting day for the airport and its partners as the federal government through Transport Canada has announced infrastructure funding to invest together with Tradeport for a two-year $46.9 million gateway expansion and sustainability project. The project will enable your airport to continue serving as a global gateway for the movement of domestic and international goods. Today's announcement of $23.4 million investment from the National Trade Corridor Fund will enable Hamilton International to accelerate investment, to expand and strengthen the critical assets, to create new full-time jobs, generate additional economic activity, and to ensure that the existing infrastructure, which yes, we did expand following the 2019 announcement and what timing of that project, but today continued assets are under pressure and we are getting ready to support the current and the emerging growth that we see. Located in a very strategic trade corridor, we are the largest domestic overnight dedicated freighter cargo airport and the third largest cargo airport in Canada. Hamilton International is a key economic driver and a vital transportation hub for Hamilton, the province and Canada. Despite the headwinds in the aviation sector over the past few years, the cargo operators that are based here in Hamilton continued to grow and continued to outpace the rest of Canada. Recent stats show that the airport had an incredible 59% increase in cargo activity over the past five years. And this steady growth can be attributed to the shift in e-commerce. And also worth mentioning, during the pandemic, the essential medical supplies and equipment, along with Canada's first shipment of adult and pediatric vaccines, arrived in Hamilton first. The successes that you're seeing today are the result of all of the airport's cargo partners. CargoJet, DHL, UPS, Purolator, Canada Post, Amazon, and Prime Air all who have already chosen to invest heavily in facilities and people here in Hamilton. I also want to thank Sergio Romano and his team today for, for providing the aircraft and allowing us to walk inside that aircraft and really understand how goods move um, from point to point. What you're seeing behind us today will actually double in capacity with the arrival of cargo jets 777s that are scheduled to arrive very soon. A recent economic impact study, study showed that in 2021, the airport generated 4,720 jobs. That was a 35% increase in new jobs since 2017, and we know that number is increasing now. We also are responsible for generating $1.5 billion in economic activity, of which $1 billion is directly related to cargo activity. And today, as the cargo mar market is stabilizing, there is confidence for the future. The carriers are advancing aircraft fleet expansions and they continue to serve more international and domestic markets than ever before. And the announcement today will also help alleviate the current constraints to ensure the time-sensitive goods are moved from coast to coast without delay. 
The priority is a robust and resilient supply chain with airport infrastructure capacity and efficiencies to ensure the essential goods are accessible to all Canadians. This project will strengthen and add capacity and will impro improve the stormwater management systems. It consists of four major elements that will increase the apron and gate capacity by 125% and the de-icing capacity by 250%. It will ensure efficient use of the aprons with the strengthening and widening of taxiways and taxi lanes. It will improve the stormwater management and add de-icing capabilities that include treatment of glycol residual on site. It will also build a new dedicated service road so that ground equipment in parallel to an active taxiway will be able to move goods quickly and safely between aircraft and the facilities. While enabling economic growth, the project will add 460 construction jobs, an additional 1,830 full-time jobs, and support the airport reaching $2.1 billion in total ac economic activity annually. The growth taking place here is exciting. And again, thank you to all of our partners and supporters for their ongoing support and collaboration for all of the successes here. On behalf of the Vantage Airport Group, the board, and Cole's leadership team, I again want to thank the Government of Canada, our ministers, the Honourable Minister Algabra and the Honourable Minister Tassi, for the funding announcement today and for supporting this critical investment to enable continued growth in our region and ensure a more resilient supply chain in Canada. Thank you and congratulations, Hamilton. Over to you. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, that concludes uh, today's um uh, ceremony as it relates to the investment, but I'd now like to turn it over to Nadine Ramadan, Press Secretary and Communications Advisor to Minister El Gabra, who will moderate the question and answer session. Nadine. Thank you. We'll now begin the question and answer period. It'll be one question and one follow up per reporter, and you can use the mic uh, right here. So, do we have a first question? Uh, good morning, Minister El Gabra, Ian Woods, CTV National News. Uh, Sunwing Airline is cancelling multiple flights across prairie cities, also in the Maritimes today, that's been announced. Is that a reasonable uh, way of dealing with their uh, airline woes? Is that a reasonable solution to Canadians to just unilaterally cancel these flights from these cities? Look, let me just say um, that the Christmas um, ordeal that happened for many Sunwing passengers was unacceptable. We went over that. Um, given how passengers were left stranded for days on end without information was really not something that any of us would tolerate or accept. Um, and I have personally raised that issue with Sunwing. When it comes to their follow-up decisions on managing their operations to deal um, with their capacity and ability to, to deliver that service, that's up to them as long as they are expected to uphold their obligations to their customers who purchase these tickets. Um, and I will continually um, be there to ensure that airlines uphold their customers' rights and fulfill their obligation towards them. Okay, and then on the situation regarding baggage, um, there's stories about bags being donated by airlines to charities, bags that are being tracked by customers. Um, should they not be doing more to make sure those bags get into the hands of the people that they belong to? Yes. Airlines should be doing more to ensure that their customers' luggage are um, safe and are handed over to them immediately after they arrive. That's what I expect airlines to do. Um, and as I stated uh, a few days ago, we are right now in the process of strengthening, looking at strengthening the passenger bill of right to ensure that luggage rules are stronger and clearer so airlines make sure that they respect their uh, customers' luggage. Have you, have you brought up specifically the situation of the donated bags? Um, I've been reading these reports uh, in the media and I find it extremely frustrating when I hear of stories of people not having their luggage for days on end. We're standing here in front of DHL, UPS, uh, we hear about how Amazon is able to fig identify where their items every moment. I don't, you know, it's frustrating that airlines still 
have not uh, modernized their luggage handling system, and it's really important uh, that from a government point, we need to ensure that customers' rights are protected. Do we have any more questions? Okay, hearing none, that concludes the question and answer period. Thank you.